So I watched a video by Ace Roller on shell texture fur and I decided to create my own in Blender learning some geometry nodes. And so here it is and I've put it on a furry sofa because why not? So it's about 40% geometry nodes to 60% um, material nodes. If we go through the geometry nodes here for this cushion, there's a group called shell texture fur and we have a hair on vertex group so you can tell what, group, what vertex group is sprouting fur and how long it is. I've called the vertex group fur because that seems a sensible name for it. We can control the hair length. We can make it shorter and longer. And go back to 0.5 there and we can choose the hair material so we could have um, a different color of hair. I've got three hair materials in this scene at the minute. You can easily create more and the hair levels is currently set at 16. If we bring it down you can see if we bring it down to one you can see it's just got one surface floating around it. Well that's actually on three. What happens if I bring it down to one? You can't see it with one for some reason. Uh, the last one seems to be transparent and we can bring it up and get more layers so we get more and more uh, dense fur for, that's used for the longer you are the longer the higher the number of levels you need is um, and those are um, attributes that get picked up in material nodes which I'll go to now there are in fact two uh, node groups used for it there's hair A and hair B and between them you get a texture that controls the where the hair is basically I've chosen a uh, Verol. I never know how to pronounce that, but um, I'm going to go with Veroni texture um, with a scale. So I could change the scale and make them uh, smaller. They're now it's sort of turning into spikes. Um, yeah, let's go down to 20. That's a bit like big spikes and the subtract. This will control the density as well. Um, and then we have to have the 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 attribute fur is and then in hair B we then have to so the hair texture alpha that's there and we control color the hair height would have to be cut from hair A and then the hair vertex group is the hair group, vertex group that we we're using earlier attribute and it's called fur as we remember and it's going to material output and of course we can change color there. Now, some of these are more complicated. On this one, it's more or less the same, but here we have the color for the Verolni texture going into color. Other than that, this is more or less the same. Oh, another thing here on this one, we've got the input of hair distribution, which is actually on there as well. I could, I could show you on each of them. So here, um, we, by having this at, uh, 0.6 it's meaning the hair is all pointing upwards along z so z up is positive numbers and down is negative numbers so we can make the hair go downwards or upwards and we could indeed go, go along any of the x y z values as well uh, and in fact if we go to the final this one which is the most complicated in terms of materials we'll see that we've actually got what we've got going into that is a noise texture. So we've got a noise texture color going into a subtract. That's a, what's that called? That's a maths, a vertex maths node, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And um, that means that we can have a rippling fur and we've got direction strength as well. So we can have very, we could set it to zero and then that's not doing anything. Or we could have a much stronger I think it was on 0.5, wasn't it? Uh, and then, whoops. And then here, we've to make these little white points on it all. After the Veroni and subtract, we've got a gamma and an add to the color. So we're able to uh, kind of have these little white pointy bits in the color there. Uh, and other than that, that's pretty much the same. That's all the way over there. Whereas that probably be easier to read. Uh, hopefully this will allow you to put fur. Um, it's designed for Eevee. It will, of course, work on um, cycles as well, but it is very much designed for Eevee, this. And it will allow you to get some uh, real-time-ish hair on a lot of your models. Thank you.
One problem with this method of doing fur is it doesn't work with ambient occlusion. You get those little ambient occlusion shadows between one layer and the next, which just doesn't look like fur. How do we get rid of ambient occlusion on one material? Well, you don't get it on a translucency node in Eevee, and we can take a translucency node and invert the normal, thus creating a diffuse node that doesn't do AO. Yeah.